Hello, friends! Did you know that there are millions of rabbits living in Australia? But when I was in Australia, I realized that rabbit meat isn't popular there. I actually read somewhere that they don't eat rabbit meat in Australia at all. So my team and I decided to investigate this issue. What we learned was shocking. The countrywide rabbit invasion in Australia began in 1859. The name of the Australian farmer Thomas Austin went down in history thanks to his passion for hunting and the very unexpected consequences of this hobby. Austin was an avid hunter of rabbits and partridges back in England. Upon arriving in Australia, he asked his nephew William to send him a dozen grey rabbits, five hares, six dozen partridges, and some sparrows in order to create a local population of these species in Australia so he could continue to indulge in his favourite pastime. Thus, in October 1859, Austin released two dozen rabbits on his property, Barwon Park near Winchelsea, Victoria. He said, the introduction of a few rabbits could do little harm and might provide a touch of home in addition to a spot of hunting. A year later, the offspring of the settlers from the Old World could be found in nature at a distance of up to 100 kilometers away from the release site, both to the north and to the west. In the favorable climate of Australia, the rabbits began to breed all year round, and one rabbit can produce up to 40 kits per year. The abundance of food and the absence of natural enemies did their job. There was a population explosion, and by the end of the 19th century, tens of millions of rabbits lived in Australia. Then, something terrible happened. 70 years later, there were already 10 billion rabbits in Australia. It was the fastest spread of any mammal ever recorded on Earth. First, millions and then billions of rabbits were roaming the continent at a speed of 130 kilometers per year. They went through New South Wales to the west of Australia. Rabbits started depleting pastures, depriving livestock of food. They also ate the young shoots in the forest. So, when old trees died, a wasteland remained in place of the forest. By depleting the vegetation, they left the topsoil exposed and vulnerable, and as it weathered, ravines formed. This devastated the lands, and it would take hundreds of years to regenerate. Because of the rabbits, Australia lost many of the local species. By 1900, several species of kangaroos died out, as they simply didn't have enough food. Many other species went extinct too. Soon, the farmers realized the full scale of the losses and damages caused by the rabbit invasion and declared war on them. All kinds of methods were used to try and stop the hordes of rabbits. They were shot, poisoned, and their holes were plowed up by tractors. But all these measures were ineffective. The famous Australian rabbit-proof fence was built in the state of Western Australia in 1907 to contain the rabbits. Most of the fence remains in place to this day. It's officially called Number One Rabbit-Proof Fence. It was built by 400 people between 1901 and 1907. The fence consists of three levels, and its total length is 3,256 kilometers. The fence goes 15 centimeters into the ground, as rabbits can try and dig under it. They can also jump rather high to get over the fence. Inspectors on camels imported from India and Afghanistan patrolled the fence. They shot the rabbits whenever they encountered them, cut down shrubs and trees on either side of the fence, and filled the holes. As technology developed, the inspectors exchanged their camels for SUVs, releasing the animals they no longer needed. Thus, they got the same problem with the camels, too. Soon, the camels bred and started destroying pastures, eating vegetation, and trampling the ground. The camels also ruined parts of the fence by pulling it out of the ground. There are currently over a million camels living in Australia. Every decade, the number of camels on the continent almost doubles, but that's another story. Now, let's get back to the rabbits. 
In 1950, a biological weapon, the Myxoma virus, was used against the rabbits for the first time. 99% of the rabbit population died from the disease at the time, but the survivors acquired resistance to the virus. In 1995, biological weapon was used again, the Calica virus, which causes rabbit hemorrhagic disease. This virus helped keep the wild rabbit population within the limits of 300 million individuals. Now, a new virus was released against Australian rabbits, RHDV1K5. It is a Korean strain, which the Australians hope will further reduce the number of rabbits on the continent. So why are there so many rabbits in Australia, but no rabbit meat in the stores? It turns out that only a few thousand rabbits are kept on private farms. There are actually only four farms in all of Australia that breed domestic rabbits. There aren't any domestic rabbit farms because the virus that helps control the wild rabbit population is carried by blood-sucking insects. Therefore, domestic rabbits must be vaccinated. One such vaccine costs $10 and another $30 in veterinarian fees. Thus, it costs at least $40,000 to vaccinate an entire rabbit farm, which is far too expensive. Therefore, rabbit meat in Australia is considered one of the most expensive kinds and is only served in the most prestigious restaurants. As for the meat of wild rabbits, first of all, they are all infected. And no one wants to eat the meat of sick animals. And second of all, since the rabbits are wild, their meat is tough and sinewy, so it has no culinary value. So that's the secret. Australians perceive wild rabbits the way we see rats as something completely inedible. Meanwhile, there aren't nearly as many domestic rabbits there. Moreover, one can't get a rabbit in Australia without registration and official permission. Otherwise, they could get a fine of $44,000. Myxomatosis is a disease that was first described in 1896 through 1909 in Brazil. It was then determined that the carrier of the virus was one of the local species of lagomorphs. By the way, France also had to fight rabbits at one point. Encouraged by the success of the myxoma virus, French officials also decided to use it. However, the process got out of control, and a real pandemic swept across Europe in 1952 to 1955. The disease spread at a speed of 450 kilometers per year, affecting every country in Europe. Rabbits virtually disappeared in Western Europe then and had to be imported from other countries. Thus, scientists can be considered the reason behind the diseases of rabbits. That's all for today, friends. We hope you found this episode interesting and informative. If you did, please like the video and don't forget to share it with your friends. We'll see you next time.